So you've decided to get some new Matter Smart Home tech. Great decision, by the way. But then you realize that the product you're interested in is Matter over Wi-Fi. Or maybe it's Matter via a bridge. And then you hear all these people online saying, Well, Matter over Thread is far superior. And it is, to a point. But in this video, I want to break down the differences between matter over thread versus matter over Wi-Fi, and when you'd want to choose one or the other or go with matter via a bridge. And finally, we'll talk about some ways you can change your smart home network to ensure setting up new devices is a breeze. This all doesn't have to be so complicated. If you're new here, I'm Eric Wielander. I've been an app developer on Apple platforms since 2011 and building out my smart home here on YouTube since 2018. So if you're into Apple or smart home tech, consider subscribing. So Matter is the new smart home standard that's gradually making everything in the smart home space work together. If it's a new idea to you, check out my video explaining the basics of Matter. But if you've gotten this far, you probably know about Matter and you also probably know about Wi-Fi. It's the wireless standard that gets your phone, your laptop, and other devices online in your home. And it can work for your light bulb too. And I bet one of the reasons they have Wi-Fi in the Matter spec is exactly that everyone can run it because essentially everyone has Wi-Fi at home. But your light bulb doesn't need to send all the data your phone does, and a Wi-Fi connection takes more energy than thread. Wi-Fi is also structured where all the devices connect back to a specific access point. If that single point of failure, the access point, goes down, all those devices go offline. On the other hand, thread uses a lot less energy, in part because it sends the least amount of data possible. Thread also forms a mesh network across your home, which means if a single thread device goes offline because your kid unplugs it, then everything else can stay online if you have other thread devices nearby to pick up the signals. But that's the thing. On paper, thread sounds invincible. If this is the first time you've heard about Thread, you're probably wondering why it's not used everywhere for everything. Thread, as we mentioned, runs on its own mesh network around your home. This means you need at least one Thread border router to connect your Thread network to your Wi-Fi and the rest of your smart home. If you have a HomePod, HomePod Mini, or top-of-the-line Apple TV, you are already covered with a Thread radio that acts as a border router but not everyone has those devices or similar for other smart home systems. Thread also has proven hard to support for lots of smart home companies. In the early days of Thread, lots of products were unreliable. Matter has helped smooth out some of this and the CEO of Matter has promised it's going to get better, but we'll see. If Thread has had issues, what about Matter over a bridge? Well, prior to the days of Matter, lots of wireless standards like Zigbee and Z-Wave ruled the smart home. This is where hubs or bridges come in. While Matter works over Wi-Fi, it actually works because of the TCP IP protocol behind Wi-Fi. This means hardwired Ethernet works too. And also, these older or other smart home wireless standards are still alive and well and evolving. Matter over bridge simply means that one of those bridges can take all those Zigbee or Z-Wave or other protocol devices and connect them to your smart home. Common examples here are Acara or Philips Hue. These can be added to your Apple Home as a matter bridge. Then they show Apple Home all those Zigbee or Z-Wave or other devices as if they were matter devices, even though those devices don't talk over Wi-Fi or Thread. In the debate between Wi-Fi and Thread, think of a bridge like a special card you can play for either situation. Assuming the bridge isn't going to be too far away from the accessories you're running and you hopefully hardwire it into your network, it'll probably be just as good or better than Wi-Fi or Thread options. This can be a great choice if you already have one of these bridges set up in your home or you see a company that uses a bridge that makes a good option of a product that really meets your needs. But having a million hubs hanging off your Wi-Fi router isn't ideal. So as you want to get more accessories that talk straight to matter, should they be Wi-Fi or Thread? Well, for certain devices like cameras or vacuums, Wi-Fi slash Ethernet is really your only option. These kinds of devices use more data than Thread can support, so you won't find any options there using Thread. On the other hand, what about devices like lights, sensors, or smart plugs? 
Well, if your device is battery operated like a sensor, or you plan to use it far away from your Wi-Fi access points, think like multiple walls or outside, then go with Thread. Otherwise, I don't think you should really care. If you have a border router and can run Thread, great. Yes, the Wi-Fi devices will use more energy than Thread, but they're often also cheaper and sometimes more reliable too. At that point, pick the product that meets your needs for other reasons like price or features. Now onto the network setup stuff I talked about at the beginning of the video. First, you need to ensure that your network supports IPv6. I wish Matter would have added support for IPv4 as well, but they didn't. For Wi-Fi, I also think it's a good idea to set up a second SSID, or network name, that just runs 2.4 gigahertz. For example, I have a network called WeHome24 alongside my standard WeHome network because we are the WeLander home. When you add a Wi-Fi device in Apple Home, it shares the Wi-Fi connection it's currently using for the device to connect to. If it's failing on your standard network, connect your iPhone to your 2.4 gigahertz only network, force quit the home app, reset the device, open the home app, and try re-adding the device to Apple Home then. Once a device is added, go back to your iPhone settings and tell your iPhone to forget the 2.4 gigahertz only network. This ensures your phone won't connect to that network when it doesn't need to. If you found any of this information useful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. And if you want to work on making your Apple Home much more reliable, check out this video over here. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.